mute it on on oh, air. So already I'm gonna live. Get, I'm gonna mute yeah. myself. Oh, hold on, I've already pressed the live button, mate. It's too late. We're done. <laughs> We're yeah. <It's, laughs> we Whereas well, you are, the world, the world of the side track, your sci fi TV and movie channel live with our strike survival guide. We're here to help you get through these strikes with telling you what entertainment you should be watching. And we're here with everybody. Say hello, everybody. Hello, yeah, everybody. everybody. Alcoholic beverage. <laughs> right, yeah, so this is vodka. Sugar food, baby. Recovering from alcoholic beverage. Yeah, you have to pretend he's got. Like Body juice in there. He's got some sort of cup. <laughs> I can see a problem with that massive bottle. One Just second, anyway. <laughs> Mr. Marmel, Marmelo was a new member just before we came on live, by the way. So thank you very much for becoming a member of the channel. Hey, Marmelo. You're an absolute legend, sir. Okay. That intro did not play for me. I saw two seconds of it, and then we were back. But I've just seen it on the replay. It worked fine. So it's all good. <laughs> Nobody expected. I was going to say, I was going to say, Harris, your bottle is the reason there are so many earthquakes in America. <laughs> Especially California. I set this thing down, and it just goes off, you know? That's right. Yeah, if ever you drive towards San Andreas, just leave the feckin' bottle. All right, mate, because it will be the big one. All right, drop <laughs> not the bottle. <laughs> the bottle. <laughs> right, so I'll tell you how this is going to work then, guys. So we are going to pick the top 10 shows that you should watch during the strikes to keep you through and keep you entertained. We have two picks each. We're going to make up our top eight. And then we have one more pick each, which we're then going to argue over to decide the top 10. We're then going to talk a little bit about the strike because Stormy has got something he wants to say, damn it. And then we might talk a little bit about AI in movies, because I went to see um, uh, the Mission Impossible movie today. And I really, really enjoyed it. Gary, hey, boys. Super Hello, Saturday. Gary. And Davey B is in the house as well. So, um, first of all, let, let's, let's, let's throw it out there. If we, if we go that way round, so it'll be mm. Matt, Stormy, Harris, me. Clockwise. And, with your first picks, so oh, we we haven't gone definitely um, sci-fi here either. We've we've had a few other. Obviously, we're sci-fi fans, so it might be a bit sci-fi heavy. But we're just going with. I've picked two shows that I genuinely, genuinely want to sit and watch. So, Matthew. So we're doing both shows at the same. Both no, shows. Do one, and we'll build it up, and we'll go around. And we'll go around and around. Well, my first show that I was going to pick, it was a toss-up between two. Um. Yeah. I've decided to go for Breaking Bad because I think it's one of the best, honestly, the best shows you can binge. If you've never seen it, there are people who have never seen it. Yeah, watch it. My boss had only. Have you never seen it? I watched the first three seasons. I got so bored, I stopped. I got about halfway through the second. Oh, one. mate, no, my my boss hadn't it seen it. I told I I told him like literally like one of the first weeks I started this new job. He needs to watch it, and then he he he, he watched it the whole lot within about a month. <laughs> I need to and take the Breaking it. Bad tour. You know, I live in in southern New Mexico now, and his and his film just right up the road. So I've really got to go take the Breaking Bad tour. A friend of mine is taking it. She's oh, it's wonderful. you got to go take it. The the woman who owns Walter's house doesn't she like hate people like being outside the house? Probably, I would. <laughs> I've she seen like he just thrown on a roof, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why would you do that though? Why would you go? As soon as he says, like, we're going to film a TV show here, and you go, yeah, of course, nobody will see that, or nobody will find out where I live. It's just stupid. Why would you do that? I wonder how many people just go on a Friday night, just sling a pizza up there, just you know, a drive by, a drive by pizza in, you know, you never go hungry. <laughs> if you see that, what's for tea tonight, guys? Just open the front door and wait. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> So yeah, my first pick is Breaking Bad just because it's one of one of, if not the greatest TV show to come out in the last like twenty years. I think it's just the perfect TV show. You need to carry on watching it because it gets way better after season three. It's one of those slow burns. Harris, Harris, will look, I think I've seen it. He loves a slow burn. I, I really like slow burns, and Breaking Bad is the epitome of slow burn. It is. I mean, because it, it literally burns right up until the end, and then the last episode is brilliant. The last episode um, is brilliant. <laughs> you have to go through like seven seasons to get there, but then 
Oh, it's marvellous. Oh, not quite. It's only five seasons. Yeah. Oh, I, have to, I only have to wait through four and three quarters of a season for it to get good. Well, um, that's unless you go Better Call Saul, and you got an extra couple. I yeah, do well, Better Call Saul's that. good from season one. Yes. I do want to watch Better Call Saul. <laughs> Uh, that is the one thing. I, I, the only reason I haven't watched that is because I didn't watch Breaking Bad. So do I actually need to watch Breaking Bad to enjoy Better Call Saul? Because Better Call Saul is uh, a prequel. Technically, prequel. Better so Call is in Breaking Bad any later. Not really, but you'd appreciate it more if you watched Breaking Bad first. Yeah. Would I? Yes, yeah. because there are characters in it who appear yeah. in Breaking Bad that you... Otherwise, you'll just think they're just random characters, but you'll appreciate it more. Watch, watch it. Breaking Bad first, definitely. Right, well, unfortunately, because this is a top 10, I have to. So I don't have a choice. So um, this is this. these are literally the shows I'm going to be watching for the next several months. So there we go. Breaking Bad is in the top 10. Davey B has just thrown in a top 10. So we, let's whip through it quickly while we're waiting. Um, Babylon 5, DS9, X-Files, Game of Thrones, Lost, The Wire. Wire, Wire is a great show. Walking Dead, nah, Stormy, you hate Walking Dead, don't you? I mean, I, I think you should just swear at Dave. No, nope, I like thing. Walking Dead. I don't know what you keep getting. I don't like Walking Dead. Because I just, I just want, I like winding you up. Uh, Father Ted West Wing and Stargate Atlantis. Oh, that was the one rule we did say for this top 10. No Stargate. Oh, yeah, we'd all Stargate all, otherwise, we'd all pick Stargate. <laughs> Yeah, we'd have all just picked Stargate else. Um, the funnily day, enough, we'd have to watch Stargate Atlantis again. Funnily enough, in my top picks, Doctor Who isn't even in there. Oh, uh, I'm a massive Doctor uh, Who fan. I'm a massive Doctor Who. Look, look, I've got David Tennant's like, I've just touched his David penis. Tennant. Yeah, you just touched David Tennant's penis, <laughs> right? I, 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 we all saw that. <laughs> I'm his hood or something. I'm not. I've sure just what... touched David Tennant. Hmm. Yeah, David Tennant. <laughs> I'm a sonic screwdriver. <laughs> it's amazing how quickly this show goes right to the dick, doesn't it? It's just. Yeah. It's. It, I mean, I wish we didn't go straight to the dick, pretty much at least three times in every video, but we do. So it's mostly Stormy's fault. I, Stormy, yeah. what is your first choice, sir? Okay, so I, I went and picked three per streaming service, and then I'm trying to narrow it down for the first pick, in, in case the. And this is based on in case the strike goes on for a long time, you know, something that can really bog you down and take you months to get through. So, so that's my criteria. And so the, the thing I think uh, my first choice is going to be X files, lots of seasons of X files. There were 20 some episodes per season and it really covered a lot of uh, horror and sci-fi and it really, there hasn't been a show like it since, you know, and I'm not really sure if there ever will be something that was so uh, culturally impactful as X-Files. So my first one is definitely X-Files from the beginning to the end and throw in the movies. Good pick. I'm watching X-Files at the moment. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm going through them. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, yeah, on Disney Plus, I'm seeing parallels with Fringe. Because Fringe for me was like, obviously I, I I watched Fringe first. Now I'm watching the X Files. It reminds me a little bit of 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 Fringe, but obviously it's the other way around. Fringe would have reminded me of X Files had I watched it. In yeah, I think I want to get uh, X Files on Hulu. Yeah, yeah. Well, we get it. We get. We don't really have Hulu. Oh, that's we right. Get Disney Plus, yeah. and it's it's kind of exactly. both. So the Orville is on Disney Plus over here. The BBC really missed a trick with giving Doctor Who to Disney. They could have given it to Hulu. Doctor Hulu. <laughs> That'd be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Hulu. Um, that would have been a very cool, interesting in thing. Um, I just want to assume they would like. But then no one in the UK would have watched it. So. Yeah, a Hawaiian, a Hawaiian Doctor, Doctor Hulu. <laughs> So yeah, the X Files. I mean, I would argue, I would straight up argue that the first season, in particular, the X Files, changed television. There's not yeah, many, really you know, you, you some movies that come along that everybody copies it from then on, and X Files is one of those shows that everybody just everybody tried to copy it. And I don't think it was ever made it right since. Yeah, yeah, it was really unique. Hey, Brett, how you doing? Hey, Brett. Howdy, howdy. Who hey. Lee Wilcox is in the house? Hey. I always. Hey. Know, hey. Hey. You know, in terms of like X Files and culture, I mean, there was this thing called the Scully effect, where a lot of girls 
uh, in their formative years, looked up to her character and went into uh, STEM careers, you know, the sciences, mm-hmm. and, and because you know they saw a positive role model yeah. that had better sense than the guy. So yeah. you know, more sensible. <laughs> More sense. Yeah, it's a this guy. It's definitely a UFO. It's a plane molder. It's, oh, it's, 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 it's smudge on your contacts. But to the point that even when she was then kidnapped by aliens, she's still going, hey, it's a plane molder because they're literally probing you now. I'm going to sexual assault or something. I don't know. Kind of like um, Matt was doing with uh, Doctor Who, David Tennant. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, David. <laughs> <laughs> But she did actually. It did. It did start to get a little bit ridiculous at one point. And they said, "You've, I, 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 Scully, you've seen quite a lot. At some point, open your mind a bit." And I mean, she did, but it took like eight, like eight seasons or something. Um, oh, so she's always really, going. So I'm only on the first season. She's always going to be the cynical one. No, it switches. And when we get to the movies. He becomes really cynical, and she's the one that's trying to support him and like, "Oh, let's, oh, let's believe it," um, because obviously she's. But um, so I, just thought, I just thought she was very, very pretty, and I don't care beyond that. So mm. she wins. Um, but yeah, I put, I put, um, I did not know what your list was before we started, obviously. But um, she is on the thumbnail because I knew one of us. Would <laughs> X Files first, particularly the first season. Same season. Aris, what is your first choice for? Well, I, I can't. Wrong, I am going to punch you in the dick. By the way, all right. So there's this other kind of fantasy version of Futurama that is called. I'm getting. I, I do love that show, though. I, I, I <laughs> honorable mention there. Uh, but it is an animated show. I'll just write Rick and Morty now, shall I? The what? Rick, shall I write Rick and Morty now? Oh, but it's it's not even sci-fi. Well, it's not, not sci-fi. There, there are steampunk elements and then sci-fi esque elements, but Avatar: The Last Airbender I think is one of the best series ever made, and yeah. it's three seasons, just greatness. Twenty minutes an episode, pop that sucker on, just enjoy it. The last episode's an hour and a half, like the best TV movie ever done. It's so damn good. Mark Hamill is Fire Lord Ozai. I, I could just go on. Yeah, Mark Hamill was in that. Yeah, yeah, just one voice. Mark Hamill did loads of voices, particularly in the like. 90s I, know, I know he was in like the DZ stuff. I didn't know he was in Avatar. He, he's yeah. the main villain. He's, he's Fire Lord. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've never watched it. I was always a Digimon kid. So, so I saw. I was watching uh, TikTok, and there was this little kid. Uh, I don't know where he was. He was on this uh, like uh, boardwalk, and is right close to the ocean, and he's doing all these, you know, moves, you know, and then right when he does this, the waves just. Shoot. That's cool. And was he, he, he was just, he under the boardwalk, down by the sea, with his baby? Oh, it's kind of musical. You're just get preparing yourself for that Star Trek musical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping to get a real a, thing. A part, but then you know, my... real, are we going to get a Buffy S style Star yeah. Trek movie or show? Yeah, we're going to get a musical. Okay. Buffy feel- musical. Or Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. I've already done a video on it. Go watch my video on it. I dropped it today. It's a lot of fun. And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm a firm supporter in them doing this Star Trek musical. I think it's a great idea. Do you sing throughout the uh, video? I was tempted to at the end. I was going to go, live long and prosper, but I decided not to. Um, because it's a stupid he idea. It I try to be really positive in the video, but it, my God, it's a stupid idea. Um, but I'm with you on Avatar The Last Airbender, mate. What do you think the chances of the Netflix series that costing $5 million an episode? What do you think the chances of that being any good? Oh, the Avatar The Last Airbender live action? Yep. I am optimistic and terrified all at once. I like that they planned everything out and, and did that aspect of it with the creators that made the original show, but then they left for creative differences. So... I don't know. We're we're gonna see how it happens, and I'm hoping for the best. Uh, but but it, they've included a lot of characters that are like in later seasons of Avatar: The Last Airbender, and put them in the first season a lot. Like Kyoshi's gonna be there a lot. The 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 Earth Goddess, and or not Goddess, but the yeah. uh, Earth Avatar, uh, and she's like in two episodes really. 
very memorable two episodes, but now she's going to be that like consistent figure that he goes back to like ask advice to. Hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. OG is always there, though. I own it. It's on Paramount Plus. It's on everything. It's, it's great. Plus. It's always there. I tell you what, Paramount Plus is brilliant at the moment. I am. That, that, that's basically all I'm watching. Um, I watched that werewolf thing with Sam Michelle Geller just because I love Sam Michelle Geller, but then I actually quite liked it. I'm watching Rabbit Hole at the moment with um, with a uh, Kiefer Sutherland, and that's really really good. And I'm really going to watch the um, there's like a cop show with Morgan Freeman in. Which I forget the name of. It's not a cop show. It's like a military show. Um, and I forget the name. But I'm reading the adverts for that. I can't wait. Really going to. I can really watch it. Anyway, my first hey, choice. Oh, Sorry, go on. Before you get into your first choice, I want to uh, wind back a little bit for what uh, David B said. The X Files is like a spin off the show Night Stalker, Cole Shack, the Night Stalker with a Darren McGavin, I think it was. And I, I remember, I remember when that came out. What a great show that was. You know, they were tried to, they tried to do a remake uh, a few years back, and the remake was absolutely horrible. <laughs> but uh, McGavin really did a great job, you know, in, in telling that story. And yeah, he was a reporter running around, but you know, it was like the other side of the FBI kind of the story. And he was just like monster of the week kind of thing. But it was just, the writing was really well done, really well done. And hats off to David B for bringing that up. But yeah, yeah. I watched that about twenty years after it was made because I was four when um, I was minus four. Sorry, my parents had just had my big brother at that point. But um, oh, lionesses, yeah, it's called lionesses. I'm really looking forward to that. I can't believe Taylor I got the lionesses of the England women's football team that I'm very excited about, but um, that's what made me keep thinking. I must watch that. Anyway, my first pick is, we've already mentioned it, is the Fringe, uh, or just Fringe. Um, back once upon a time when J.J. Abrams was actually quite good at his job, before he ruined all of our beloved franchises, all of them. Um, yeah, the Fringe was just a brilliant series. Even though it had Joshua Jackson in it, who was an actor, I hate, hate him so much. Um, oh, yeah. He played Peter Bishop. He just, he just looks like a freaking idiot. But he grew a bit of a beard and actually made, it made him look less of an idiot. So I, I really love that. Um, I loved Walter, though, in it. The, the, I think his name was John Noble. After Fringe, yeah. he was in everything for a bit. And he mm -hmm. played them like nutty granddad. From, He's like, in The Boys. Uh, he was in The Boys, yeah. He's like um, I think he's but Billy Butcher's dad, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's in that. He's he's just a brilliant actor. He's in Return of the King, by the way. Yeah, yeah the guy that played Denethor. Yes. yes. Ah. Yeah. Exactly. He's just he's very just bad eating actor. habits. Oh, oh alternate. Yeah, yeah. Alternate. I forgot about him. Yeah. But back in two thousand and eight, you know, J.J. Abrams was actually able to make some pretty good TV. He made this. It was I. I one hundred percent agree with you. The like the format was very X Files Z. The first episode though blew me a freaking way. I bought the like the airplane thing and the art. Oh, it was mm -hmm. so it, the open episode is fantastic. But the main reason why I've picked it is I've not watched this series since it came out. I watched it when it was out, and I've not watched it since. So that's that was two thousand and eight. It came out, and I've not watched it since. So you I've know, not I watched it in about ten years. I think. Yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking, I'm ready for a bit mm. of um, Fringe once again. So that's why it's on my mm. um, Never Hand J.J. Abrams an existing <laughs> IP. No, he's he's quite good when he does his own stuff. He's not so good when he tries to... And involve. also, don't let him finish his own product projects. Let somebody else come in there and finish for him, you know? The only yeah. problem with Fringe is the last season. That's good. The last season did sort of... They didn't quite... It was a bit like Lost, wasn't it, I think? They didn't... They painted themselves it, it, in a bit of a corner. It, it was just a complete U-turn. It wasn't yeah. just, It wasn't anything like season... What? How many seasons were there? Five? Six? Five seasons, yeah. Yeah, so season exactly. five wasn't the same as season four. It was a complete like narrative shift. Everything was completely different. It was just weird. Also, it was all right, but... Any, any of you guys watch uh, Abrams' uh, Alias? Not all the way through. I did... I did, but I didn't. I never really quite got into that. I watched the, like the first couple seasons, and then it kind of it changed channels or time slots, or and then or I, something else came on, or I don't know. I think I watched the first season, but I never quite got into it. That's the one with um, uh, uh, Ben Affleck's Jennifer, wife, Jennifer, Jennifer. Jennifer. 
Sanders, Jennifer Sanders. No, that's um, that's somebody else. That's a comedian. Uh, but yeah, she was in it, wasn't she? But but yeah. J -Lo? I, I, never, I, never, I never, I never loved it. But um, I watched that um, the one with the I don't know, I don't know Anyway, moving on. So that was my first choice. Anyway, Fringe. So we got four. That's four seasons we've all got to watch. So Matthew, what is your second definite choice for the top ten? My definite second choice. Um, would it would have been Fringe, but you'd already picked it. So I'm Are thinking, we? what TV shows do I tend to have on rotation? And my second choice is going to be Heroes. Ooh, okay. Because I loved, I loved. The rest. No, the rest. all of them. All of no, them. The second the season, I'm, the second season, I, I'm, I, I absolutely hate, and I do tend to skip quite a lot of episodes in season two. Yeah. The season three and four were really good. I never watched Heroes. I've always meant to, and I just never have. I tried. My to favorite watch character the, was Sila. I love the evil people. Um, Peter's dad was evil. He was great. I liked him. I was rooting for the evil guy, the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. And then, they, and then, and at the end of season four, they made Sila good, and I hated it. But whatever, it got cancelled after that. So I just imagine he then turned evil again. Yeah, yeah. it's one of those shows that was a victim to uh, the writers' strike back in two thousand and eight. That's why two thousand. That's why the second season was wank. I think it was a victim of its own success as well. Though the first season was just ridiculously popular, and the second season was never going to live up to expectations. It was like everybody was like, "I'm going to go save the cheerleader." Oh yeah, yeah. Save um, the cheerleader, save the world. Yeah, and I was like, it. It was just ridiculous. Nobody expected that show to be anything like that popular, and there was nowhere for it to go. So I think they were like, "Oh shit, we we're expecting this." I don't know. There was plenty of places for it to go. So the second season was it just got cut short. They they literally got given half the um, episodes that they mm. were given for the first season, and subsequently the third and fourth. There was plenty. There was plenty of story to have because for season three and four was great. It was just, I think, a victim of the writer's strike, and you That's can tell. Good. You can tell. Xena Warrior Princess. I actually love. I was that. just thinking about that. I haven't thought about Xena in a long time. I like some Xena. Yeah. I like a little Lucy. I see her in stuff every so often. I saw her in, um, I was watching, um, oh, that spy show with Michael Weston. My name is Michael Weston. I'm a spy. What's that? I've, I've been I've watching all of it at the moment, and I can't remember the name. Uh, Burn Notice. She was in Burn Notice. And she was Burn gorgeous. In it. She was also uh, in X-Files, also in Battlestar Galactica. You yeah. had prominent roles in all of those, not just uh, guest slots. Yep. She had a Spartacus. really good guest slot in Agents of Shield. See her boobs and spots. <laughs> Is there a film called Burn Notice? Possibly. Maybe. The series is great. Anyway, I'm really enjoying the series. So I'm, I, I don't know if I'm remembering it right, but I've seen something, and I'm sure it was called Burn Notice. And there's a guy who gets strapped to a car with a bomb. Is that the same thing you're thinking of? This was a USA Network. Well, here it was a USA Network show. Is about a, Scott, a spy that had been um, uh, more or less just let go, and he was uh, on his own, and he was just running around doing stuff that was kind of spyish. And he always talked. You know, he had kind of broke the um, uh, the fourth pane, talking to the audience of what all is going on in terms of uh, spy, <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of spycraft. Yeah. Oh, loads of loads of brilliant tips on how to get away with murders and things. If you actually like take notes, really good. Um, like evasion techniques and all sorts. But no, it's a great show. If that's my go-to background show when I'm working and I don't really want to concentrate on it, um, it's my that's my go-to show at the moment when I'm working. Um, and it oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've, I've just done a quick Google search and I can't I can't find I can't see it under burn notice. It might be under something completely different. Yeah, it, it, it also had uh, Bruce Campbell as a co-star. And that's one of the reasons why I love it because I just love Bruce Campbell. Give me some sugar, baby. Go on, Stormy. Give me some sugar. <laughs> but the great Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Can't argue that. Can't argue with that. Um, all right. Where, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, so yes. It's heroes, the first season, none of the rest because the rest were rubbish. First season, no, nope, no, nope. I'm going to put all of them in there, even the second season, because you need the second season for the third and fourth to make sense. And do we have to put in the reboot, the revived series, no. reborn? We no. can leave reborn out. So, yeah, <laughs> heroes. heroes reborn did not happen. Reborn. 
not reborn because it was shit. Okay. <laughs> My problem with Heroes Reborn, right, right. I'm going to go in, into this now, right? So oh, Heroes God. Reborn. Okay. Claire Dennett, she is the cheerleader who can regenerate. And it was already established during the show that yeah. when the um, eclipse happened, you all lose your powers. That was established. That's absolutely fine. But when the eclipse ends, you get your powers back. Now, cast your minds back to season one when Claire Bennett had the things, the shivs shoved in her head and she died. When that was pulled out, she then regenerated. So effectively, when that was in her head, her powers weren't working. In yeah. Heroes Reborn, the reason why she's not in the show is because she died during childbirth because there was an eclipse at the time. Which doesn't make sense because even if she did die during an eclipse, when the eclipse ended, she would have come back to life. Because it happened before. No, no, I'm with you. I care. I fucking care. There are other bigger problems with that show. <clears throat> There's other much bigger problems. But no, I know, I know you're coming from. I hate it when established canon gets, well, either just completely ignored for the story or forgotten about. Or in this case, they couldn't get. I want to say her name is Patisserie. Hayden Penitere. Hayden Patisserie is. Um, she's oh, in oh, it. Okay. I can't say that. Um, and they couldn't get her in it because she was married to. Is she married to like a tennis player or something? There. She's married to somebody really famous. I don't know. Anyway, I don't care. But they couldn't get her in it, so they just made up some nonsense reason why she wasn't in it. Anyway, Stormy, what's what's they, number? They six? could have just ignored it. Just, they just ignored it. it. She's got on holiday for that week. They didn't have Peter in it. They didn't have Sila in it. And I know Zachary Quinto was like big during like Star Trek time during that time. That's why he wouldn't have done it. But Milo Venter, Melegit, whatever the hell the hell Peter's name is in real life, was doing fuck all and he could have been in it. <laughs> Even Nathan was in it. And everyone hates Nathan. Yeah, everyone hated that show. So no. The first season of Heroes was excellent though. Um, and I've got to watch this now, but not Reborn. Not Reborn. I don't have to watch Reborn. Don't so watch Reborn. Reborn didn't happen. Stormy, number six on our list is... So, uh, going for longevity, in case the uh, strike continues for a very long time, I'm going to go a little bit vintage on you guys. And I'm going to recommend not the, not the movie, not the failed attempt of a remake, but I'm going back to the OG here. I'm going to... Dark Shadows. Ooh. Dark Never Shadows. I get to watch it. Brilliant. 1,230 episodes of Jonathan Freed being a vampire. Oh, you twat. I have to actually watch that. 1,000. They're like 10 minute episodes or something, or I've got to watch a thousand. <laughs> you remember when I messaged saying, I'm going to watch these shows, don't you? You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh. I remember that. I, I saw that. I normally read the messages when I send them to you, telling you what's going on in a, show, in a video. I, I read that one. 1,225 episodes. 230? What are you talking about? I hate you, Stormy. Oh, oh I'm, on, I'm wait, on. Wait, wait, wait. You said 235 or 1,235? 1,230, I think, according to uh, IMDb. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm on, I'm on Wiki. <sighs> uh, mm. Hmm, that's too many episodes, Stormy. <laughs> that's too many episodes. <laughs> I'm it. We're surviving here. We are surviving the writer's strike. We're How long do you expect the writer's strike to last, Stormy? Writers. I'm going hiking. <laughs> um, when this goes ticks through nine years, this writer's strike, I'll be maybe just about finished watching Dark Shadows. Right, so why should we watch Dark Shadows? Other than 1,200 episodes, are they 30 minutes at least? They're not an hour, are they? Uh, I think they're 30 minute episodes. Oh, God for that. Right. So, why should we watch Dark Shadows? Because we never really got it here in the UK. So, I've never seen it. You've never seen Okay. So, um, I think here, really. You, you want to start watch? So, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out here. You want to start watching it when Jonathan Freed first appears. Because Dark Shadows was. That's about 1,100 episodes in. It was a show about this. Um, Fancy New England family, the Collinses. And it was your standard kind of darkish, uh, dark fan, not really dark fantasy, just kind of darkish, morose, depressive soap opera back in the 70s or 60s and 70s. And um, 
So just saw that comment. And so it was going to get it was going to get canceled. So Dan Curtis, the producer, said, "Well, fuck, let's just do whatever we want to do then, right? And just ride out the rest of the contract." So let's say, oh, there's this ancestor of the Collins family called, you know, Barnabas Collins. Let's make him a vampire. And then Willie Lomas, he's the gardener. Let's throw him out there in the back of, in, the, in the back lot and open up the coffin. And then turns out there's a vampire in there. And it was so popular with everybody that it got renewed miraculously for many years to come. It became this. It became the show that college students went home back to their dorms to watch. It was extremely popular. Even my grandmother. Yeah, loved it. My for grandmother that. was not she really into, like the whole demon position. That was not her kind of thing. But she loved it. She yeah. loved it. So dark shadows. Right. Was so it like a soap opera, but with like Dracula's? Yeah. Dracula's yeah. Oh, oh, was there was werewolves. There were ghosts. It started out as just like, you know, kind of a depressive um, New England kind of uh, vibe that, got, that was getting canceled. And then this, the producer said, well, let's just throw in vampires because what do we got to lose? Let's just go out with them. And then it became popular. Every show should do that. Every show should I, do I'm that. I'm looking at the wiki for this show. And it says it come out in 66. Mm. Yeah. And the last episode was... In seventy one, how did they have so many episodes in between? That's like what five, five years. Oh, well, see, they just never stopped. You know, they would they would shoot like a uh, five episodes a week. So it was literally like a soap opera. It was on like it every was, night. It was a soap opera. Yeah, it was a soap opera. New production every day, just like Guiding Light or As the World Turns or any of those. It was just another soap opera. But this, yeah, yeah it's five five episodes a week. That that. Checks out. Jericho was brilliant. Sorry to change the Jericho was brilliant. And Jericho I, was brilliant. when I was watching the boys, I'm like, where the hell do I know this guy from? <laughs> right? Who is this guy? I know him from something. It's freaking Jericho. Anyway, Jericho. Yeah, Lee Wilcox is right. It was the East Enders of sci fi. Yeah. Which I think they should do. I mean, East Enders would be so much more interesting. Is it's like when somebody has an affair with somebody else, then the vampire comes in and eats them both. <laughs> so much better. Um, so we need to, we need to, we need a, we need a, a sci-fi like soap opera again. I mean, it just, they could just do mental shit with it. They, I mean, I, I don't know, man. Coronation Street with werewolves. Once a month, everybody just gets eaten. Um, it'd be great. Um, right. So Dark Shadows. Um, do I have to watch the movie with Johnny Depp in? No. Thanks. As we're going to ask. And you don't have to watch the uh, miniseries that had. Alex, what's his name? As Barnabas, he was in. He he, he played um, uh, Paul Atreides in the sci-fi miniseries Dune. Alex, yeah. something. Yeah. I'll have that name up in a second. I, said, I love this. I didn't watch Jericho at first because I thought it was a Bible bashing, and it really wasn't. Yeah, it really, really wasn't. <laughs> Alex Newman. Alec Newman. Played Barnabas. Ignore that too. Okay. Right. Well, we got Dark Shadow. So number seven on the list, Harris, is up to you. Looking number seven. What are we going for? Well, well, I I I'm, I might say I, I don't know. This is possibly my favorite series ever. Possibly. Possibly. I, I, you know, it, it changes every day, but I, I, it's the one I go back to. And like, if I have to put something in that slot, I typically put this one. I just no. finished, and it just finished its sequel series, Mayans FX or Mayans MC on FX. But Sons of Anarchy, I think those those eight seasons or seven seasons of just near perfectness. It reinvents itself like t two or three times, and each time it just totally changes what it is and continues it. And in all of its glory, it's perfect. It's terrifying. It's awful. It's great. It's Sons of Anarchy. I love it. If, 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 you, if you were to compare, you've seen Walking Dead, haven't you? Yeah. Sons of Anarchy or Walking Dead, which one is better? Oh, Sons of Anarchy all day. Like, like I, I think Walking Dead has a better first season. I think the first season of Walking Dead is one of the best first seasons of television maybe ever. <laughs> Because but, I've, I've been wanting to watch Sons of Anarchy for a, a really long time. 
as a show, uh, Sons of Anarchy is amazing. David's mm-hmm. happy down here. The, the series finale for Mayans was this past Thursday, and I was just devastated for like two hours after. It made me watch something that y'all are going to be very happy that I started watching, but I'm saving that for just a little bit. Okay, you know, so so my uh, my favorite character was actually a character that was in both of those series, Link. Link and Potter. Oh, Link and Potter. Oh, I don't want to say anything because David's in here, but the way Link and Potter's story ends in Mayans is great. It's great. Yeah. Now, one thing, w- one thing, one thing, just Ray McKinnon, the actor that plays Link, he had, he, he, he has an Oscar that hardly anybody knows about. He produ- he wrote in, in uh, I think he produced, wrote and produced this uh, one little short movie called The Accountant. Not the one with no, oh, yeah, no. Movie. that was a proper no, 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 no. was it? No, 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 no. Wasn't that the okay. account? It was. He it was. He wrote it. It was it. only just. It was. Uh, he he played. McKinnon plays an accountant that I don't want to give away the. Uh, I don't want to give away the plot of what he is doing, but it was an excellent short little movie, about a half hour, I think it was, and he won an Oscar. Best short film. So he is actually an Oscar winner, and hardly anybody knows it. So I'm just, you know, showing the love for uh, Ray McKinnon here. I've it, never seen Sons of Anarchy, and I, I am definitely going to sit and watch it. Based you'd on like it. I've got to because I've agreed I'm going to watch all 10 episodes. But um, Peggy from um, Marriage of Children's in it. So I, you admit that, to be honest. You could have just gone, Peggy's in it, and I'll go, oh, what's that then? Well, um, but yeah, there's some good actors come through that. Some good movies, big movie oh. star actors have got big parts and stuff. And I'm like, who the bloody hell is this guy? And I have to go back and oh, he's in Sons of Anarchy. That's I how can't even remember the guy's name. Is it? I don't. I, I'm, I'm probably misquoting the band, but uh, it's not Metallica. But one of the, some big heavy metal singers in like the last two seasons too, and he plays like mm-hmm. some like uh, white power kind of like background dude that's bad and stuff. But he plays it excellently, and it's it just the, the people they bring in are great. So good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or you could have just said uh, Leela plays in it, and now it would have been fun. Did you guys watch Millennium when that came out? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, um, add um, Thingy from Aliens and that in it. And, um, it yes. Show. Yes. Quite, David it, D knows all. Didn't have enough focus for me. I think that was the problem with it. It never quite, we never quite, it was too much mystery, not enough focus, and people just didn't really know what they were watching. I so thought I it was really was cerebral. Amazing. Yeah, very cerebral, but maybe a bit There's too a lot much. Of acting, but. The, um, people didn't get it. So, right. Second series on my list, right, is a bit left field. Oh. I have my reasons. Um, and it's basically because I didn't watch it, so I've never seen it, right? Um, it's got a very pretty lady in it who's naked for most of the series, and I kind of want to see that um, because I'm a boy. Wait, how can you make a recommendation on something you've not seen? Because I'm t- I'm not recommending it. I'm saying this is these are the series I want to binge. Is this like Playboy Mansion or something? What is it? <laughs> I always wanted to watch it, but I I never got a chance to see it. So I really want to watch Homeland. Right. So I am going to binge it. So I am saying that this is these are my two choices because I'm desperate to watch it. Marina um, Baccarin. Oh, boobs oh, out right, a lot. Right, 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 right. For me, oh, I was, Adria. Yeah, Adria. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like I, I saw um, Nathan Fillion and um, Alan Tudyk in an interview, and they were talking about Marina, saying, "Oh, she's she's in Home and she's brilliant." And we got to see so much of her in it, <laughs> and then they both sort of giggle. I was like, "Why are they giggling?" And then I asked my wife, and she was like, "Yeah, she's naked for most of that." And I was like, oh. "She's naked for about this much, this much." I think the first time we see her, she's got her boobs out. But anyway, I don't care. I want to. Anyway, I'm, I'm taking the mic. That's not why I want to watch it. I actually, I love. I love Claire. Homeland is excellent. Homeland is excellent. Is yeah, it, it really. Uh, it also one thing I liked about it has, has nothing to do with terrorism or whatever, but it really started to treat uh, it's one of the very first television shows that really started to treat mental illness respectfully. Yeah. Yeah, I think oh, oh, there was so much going on in that series. I, 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 I know what was. I sort of know what was happening. In it. My wife actually have seen it, so I do know bits and bobs about why, and that just inspired me even more that I desperately want to watch it. Um, and I love Claire Danes, but main my main <coughs> reason I wanted to watch it. I joke about Adri's boobs. Um, I am joking, but um, I've seen Deadpool, so I do not look like. Um, 
but it's Damien Lewis. I think Damien Lewis is one of the is the most underrated, just brilliant actors we've yes. had for years. He so did good. that Stephen King film that was with the with the giant alien thing that, that oh, it was just, was just brilliant. Um, and yeah, I, it's just I just desperately want to watch it. I can't believe I'd never have seen it. So I'm what's gonna. The other, what's the other show he's in? Is it is it Billionaires or? Uh huh. He's or a billion. billion. Yeah, billions. I've never seen that in. <laughs> so I need to watch that as well. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna watch Homeland. So that is on my list. 2011. It was on Showtime. Also, Mandy Pat- Mandy Patinkin is in it. Yeah. Um, who is another actor? Absolutely, it's inconceivable that I've never seen this series. Inconceivable. Damn it. No, 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 Princess Bride. No. Okay, fine. Um, but he's brilliant, and he actually, I believe, he left CSI. Not CSI. He left Criminal Minds to do this show, so for me that also just says it's got to be a good show. So it, it, it's yeah, it's it's. I don't want to piss off the Criminal Minds fans, but Homeland is really dark, really gritty. It was really timely in concerning you know the uh, 9/11 and mm-hmm. uh, the uh, war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Just and and he has such great lines. He has such a great character. I mean, yeah. he really was able. To, I mean, I think Showtime gave him the freedom to do exactly what he that part needed to do, and that was no way in hell that was ever going to make it to uh, network television. What, yeah. what was the last good like Showtime show? Because they used to just come out with stuff just as much like HBO. That was a uh, Stargate. Much, Stargate a was one. It's isn't it still their highest rated show? Like, I definitely. think it is. I mean, it's just it left for sci fi, and it's. Showtime is just yeah. yeah. It's definitely their highest opening. We we promised we weren't going to mention Stargate, but um, it's yeah, it's. Oh, it's we never promised we wouldn't mention it. <laughs> we just <laughs> we put it in the list. We just not put it on a list. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, amazing, amazing show. Right, we got to we've got our top eight. Now we've got to pick okay. our, our last two. But there's only we've got four of us, and there's only two spaces, so there's going to be some arguing. Um, I suspect Harris is going to come up with something just that will easily be able to dismiss. Yeah. Future armor just once. Dare you? I can dare you. <laughs> Future, I, I already got Sons of Anarchy. We got Leela in this thing. I already got so, Leela. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you picked a great show, so that's cool. So, right, Matthew, what is your first wild card? What is your first pick choice to try to argue your way into this? Well, the, my third one that I was going to pick as. As my first, but I opted for Breaking Bad instead, and so my third is is Better Call Saul, on the on the very basis that you need to watch Breaking Bad first. Okay, that's why I didn't make it my number one, because I do think um, Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad, even though Breaking Bad is the perfect TV show for me. Better Call Saul was better. Should have picked the Sopranos. Oh, why didn't I pick the Sopranos? So much better than Breaking Bad. Oh, the Sopranos. Scrap this list. Just watch the Sopranos. <laughs> um, it is a good show though. Um, but it's not on my list. But yeah, okay. Best call so. Um, I love nobody. Nobody was my favorite film last year. I thought it was mm-hmm. just the 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 Bob well, Odenkirk is just fantastic. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I desperately need Ooh, to watch Better Call Saul. Twenty twenty one, wasn't it? Well, was it last year? Sure, Paris. I was just I was just making sure my, my time's going right in my brain, you know. Like, well, hang, on, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. This catchphrase has shifted. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got enough sense not to not to say it to storm me though. <laughs> so, I can feel his rage. Um, but anyway, okay, storm a rocket right? into your house. Clear <laughs> <Right. laughs> my door. Oh, wall. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this I'm really torn over number three because I've got like 20 number threes. But yeah. I'm going to go um, – there, there's several reasons why I'm going for this title. One is there's a lot of episodes for us to watch. Uh, it was really good, really good acting. Uh, it had a decent start, but I thought unlike a lot of series finales, it was really, really, really strong. Especially the season finale. I mean, it it was. I've never seen something 
so emotional and so perfectly wrapping up everything. And that is Supernatural. Okay. That is on my list to watch. Because, I mean, you know, you know, the two brothers, they go through thick and thin. Then I don't want to, if someone that hasn't seen it, I don't want to spoil it, but there's an event at the very end and how their two lives diverge. It just, I was just really, I was, I was not crying. Fuck you guys. I was not crying. It was really, really well done. So, yes. Like a baby. Uh, the guy that played Satan in it is one of my favorite actors. He was played Badger in Fast um, in Firefly. Yeah, he's done all sorts, and I just love it. Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, yeah. I've never watched all. I haven't watched all of Supernatural. Um, I started to watch it, got my mind distracted by other things. So that is a hundred percent on my list. You might have had a very good shout there, sir, for to make the top ten. I, yeah. I'm also, I, I've Can almost, I had a fourth. I've got a uh, I've got an uncle that is a hardcore Bible thumper. He's very much into eschatology, into the world shit. So I'm trying to get him to watch it. I think he would enjoy it. I mean, fallen angels and demons, and he he attended I think this virtual uh, prophecy conference. Yeah, it's about the end times, and they actually played a clip, and I think that gave me a little bit more ammunition to, or a little bit more emphasis. Go watch this. You know, because I think Dean, his, the thing that he rattled back to me was, uh, one, he said, one of the characters said, well, I didn't even know Satan was dating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, I, I, you know, I think for serious horror, serious sci-fi guys, and and maybe the eschatology crowd would be something that they could watch and and in, literally, you know, enjoy. Was it CW? It's Supernatural. What, what channel was well, that? Yeah, it? Yeah, it was a CW show. Yeah, that's the only thing that did well. What were you going to say, sorry, Harris? Before oh, but uh, it, it no, no, I said, I said, can I, ha- can I submit a fourth? No, I was going to say, a Supernatural is currently on Netflix. Unless you, I, I, unless we, we will have to maybe argue it at the end. We'll, we'll go back around again. As, if there's any other arguments, we can have as many as we let. Because I can't out. believe I didn't say this one. <laughs> no, I'm a little. Bit well, we can't it. believe it either, and we're so disappointed. I can't believe it's this front. Harris, what was your third pick? Well, just because Matt just said talk about four, I'm going to go ahead and cheat and, and put four in here real quick. Uh, Mayans, Jim's and Legend of Korra. You twat. Four, third one. Put your third one in, and then um, have another the one in the The sequel shows of the ones I said earlier. <laughs> Uh, no, but realistically, I would say go watch the sequel shows. Watch Mayans, watch Legend of Korra. But the one I'm choosing, just to make y'all proud, because I'm, I'm, I think on episode nine now. I've started in the past week. Firefly? You, you should watch some Firefly if you haven't watched Firefly. I'm fucking Firefly. loving it. Loving it. It's so good. Talk about Miranda Backer in a little bit. I mean, yeah. It's not going to help the, um, so the strike unless the strike ends tomorrow, but because there's only four or fourteen episodes, but it is perfect. I've it's... I've watched I've already watched it all once this year, and I started again yesterday. <laughs> I watched it I, about times a year. It seems pretty rewatchable, so it, it, it kind of fits. Really rewatchable. And you know, the, when I when I got the DVD set, I was actually able to watch it in order. Yeah. Because when we first showed on Fox, it was like all disjointed, out of order, on different night, every single week it seemed like. And then they just seemed like they stopped advertising it all together. Yeah. I, I said, Popcorn Pirates just made a point. He didn't watch Firefly. That was the problem. Nobody did. We all fell in love with it when the DVD box set came out. I know. It's <laughs> like Western bullshit. You know, what is this stuff? You know? And, you know, and Popcorn is just exactly right. Western space. I mean, it's like... Aliens versus what was the the thing? Uh, Cowboys aliens? versus aliens. Yes, Cowboys <laughs> versus aliens is like really. Yeah, I'm with you. It looks. Stupid. Oh, that was great. I saw it on the sci-fi channel. I just thought this looks stupid. But then I caught um, the one where they steal the Lazarus. I caught that episode on Sci-Fi Channel one day just by accident, and I'm just like, this looks really interesting. I'm intrigued. And then I happened to walk past HMV, and I was just like, there was just a big pile of the box sets for like twenty quid. So I was like, I'm gonna give that a go. And then literally 14 hours later, I'm there on my second go round going, <laughs> yeah, the greatest show ever made. <laughs> Why did they cancel that? 
that's so painful. Oh my god. And then they, I think, announced the movie, and I was just like, "This is the greatest day ever." <laughs> hey, I was going to ask Popcorn a question. He said he come. Popcorn, uh, you said you come to respect westerns over time. What did you think about Dances with Wolves? Ooh, good question. It's really long. I mean, that's like Lord of the Rings long. Oh, it was yeah. only like two some hours. Now, if you get the extended edition. Okay, I saw the, the, the graves, but yeah. Well, if you count Yellowstone as like the prequel <laughs> dances with <laughs> Wolf, when it can get a little bit, it's okay. It's okay. When when Dances with Wolves first came out, it was one of the very first uh, movies to actually show in kind, somewhat realistic fashion, the plight of the Native Americans, the indigenous people, and no one had ever seen that before, really, here in America, and it was just like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah, you know, and now um, I'm unsure if the TV show Reservoir Dogs has helped or hurt. Because <laughs> I swear to God, I, I guiltily love Reservoir Dogs. I can't <laughs> recommend it to anybody. Uh, the, that Reservation Dogs. Reser that yes, show? Reservation. Yeah. Dogs. I've been meaning to watch it. What in the hell? I mean, I love it, but it's just like it's like H and R Pup and stuff. I mean, to me, the, the characters are so just. I love it, but. No. Not much. Oh. No. Yes. I will maybe give it a go. Right, oh, my, oh. my last choice for the final 10 before we go around again and you complicate these things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have like seven other shows coming my mind. That's the one complicating thing. I've just yeah. got 20. Well, I'm going to have a whip through because there's been some brilliant options in the chat as well. But uh, my last one was Farscape. I have to admit, because, again, I haven't seen it since it came out all those years ago. Um, I love Ben Browder and I love Claudia Black. Um, um, I love the guy that plays Scorpius. I just thought his character was amazing. Um, oh, I love yeah. puppets and stuff and physical, um, you know, makeup and things. I just thought it was just a brilliant series. I liked Andromeda, but. Farscape was way better. Farscape. And I recently watched the first episode. It's actually on YouTube. You can watch it from beginning to end on YouTube for completely for free. Um, and I watched the first episode and I had forgotten how damn good that introductory episode was. It's very much Book Rogers. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm watching this going, somebody watched Book Rogers and liked it <laughs> and wanted to throw some puppets in. Um, but it's just, it's just phenomenal. I mean, if you love conceptual sort of slightly out there sci-fi. Yeah. It's just amazing. And then watch the Peacekeepers Wars. It's just incredible. They did five seasons, four seasons, four seasons, and the Peacekeeper Wars. If you like sci-fi and you haven't watched Farscape, it's something wrong with you. You've got to watch it. I have Farscape on my hard drive, ready to watch. There you go. There you go. You are ready. Hello, Switzerland. So let's go and complicate it then before we... Um... Hey, Radio TV History. How are you doing? I'm oh, nice. chocolate, will you? Um... Farscape is completely free on YouTube. That's insane. The first episode is anyway. I don't know if the rest are, but the first oh, episode... I just checked. It's the, all four seasons. Yay! What? Like uh, all four seasons, seasons are on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Like, we're giving us some consumer advice. You can go watch it for free, people on YouTube. Fantastic. Strike survival it? guide. Just the, the epitome of. Yeah, We've got yes. That's got to get on there now, just for that, because we can all watch it. Right, go on there, guys. Before we, we pick two out of this list, how is this legal? Anymore? That, it's probably supported by ads or something. Yeah, it yeah. does have a lot of uh, TV shows that's ad supported that is legal to stream. Yeah. If the but people are owning it, in, the premium. Own it. Yeah. So who on their own the um, the copyright? They can do whatever they want. I'm not going to complain. I have YouTube Premium. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Do you want to throw any more in before we decide? Uh, freaks and geeks. Just because we, I started thinking about. One season early shows in the 2000s that got canceled way too early. Pushing Daisies. But anyway, I'm going to stop. I'm going to just start naming things. Just... I hated Pushing Daisies. One thing I thought was... My fourth. My fourth, yeah, I can't believe I didn't say it, was Dexter. Yes. That show I binge, I've been so many times. Dexter, yeah. I think I would actually put that above Heroes. Oh. If, no, in fact, I would. Dexter is better than Heroes. Okay, well, I can take that. Okay, so we're taking out Heroes and we're throwing in Dexter instead. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
I can. I'm. I'm okay with that. That's fine. Um, you Even read it, Dexter well, New Blood, House, House Thirteen was amazing. Dexter New Blood, the new series they did recently, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I didn't like the ending, but I didn't like the ending of Dexter either. So, <laughs> <laughs> such a good show, and it just ends so bad. <laughs> We don't All talk. Right, is, it, is it season six that's awful? Is that the one that's really, really bad? No, There's season one? eight. Season eight. Well, a lot of season eight's not that bad, and then you get to the end, and it's just. Ugh. Well, the season eight's the, 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 the finale, yeah. isn't it? And it, the finale's it's, awful. Yeah. You just find you find out he's a lumberjack. Mm-hmm. And you're like, mm, I'm a lumberjack. Why? Okay, works all day. Work all day. I'm a lumberjack. Sidetrack uh, the musical. Here we go. I work all night and I work all day because I'm lo- Yeah, I love that song. Um, and then the only the, the song that I love that from like that always makes me think about is um, Robin Hood, Prince of um, Robin Hood. Oh, what is it? Men in tights. Men in tights. We're men. We're mighty men. We're men in tights. We wander around the forest looking for fights. Fights. <laughs> I love that. Well, I, I totally forgot about that. Oh, in the middle of the movie. John no, Campbell is like the Wikipedia, I think, of uh, yeah TV shows. Brilliant. Right, so we've got Warehouse 13, which I think we can knock off, haven't we? Because even though it was brilliant, did you guys ever watch it? I you watched know? it one season. Yeah, it was good, but we can knock that out. So we've got Better Call Saul, we've got Farscape, we've got Supernatural, or Firefly. Do we knock out Firefly just because we're going to watch it anyway and it only takes actually 10 hours to watch? It's understandable. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not binge worthy in the sense that you want to. Well, you, know. you knock it out in no time. Well, yeah. you can you can smash one out in a day if you really want it. It's not your survival <laughs> guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll knock that out. Um, Better Call Saul is on there for me. Farscape or Supernatural? I I mean I'm putting it to start. I'm Supernatural because I I didn't watch it all. Supernatural. You've got a lot more to watch. Yeah. Out of everything, seasons, wasn't it? Ten seasons. Oh, oh it, was, it? Really cool. no, it was. It was like fifteen. I think it was fifteen. Fifteen seasons. Okay, and so fifteen seasons of anything CW, now. I just can't do. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> still no, making I mean, it. Of all the things that was on this come and gone off of CW, uh, Supernatural is the only thing I've seen from beginning to end. Like, like the uh, flag, uh, I got, you know, the Arrow. I just kind of got ugh, after a few seasons. It was like the same old, same old, kind of remixed. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it survived Arrow more than anything else other than uh, Supernatural. Yeah, it just kept surviving it. I've got to cheat. How about if we cheat slightly? Because it's our show. We can do what we like. If we throw in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul together, because you've got to watch one to watch the other. We it's can one continuous that. IP. Let's just call it that. Yeah. We and we do the same to Lions in. Um, so now you have to toss El Camino in there, too. And supernatural. No, we don't. Yes, El Camino uh, is is El Camino is good. Don't ruin it. Ruining you it. Need to watch, watch you need to watch El Camino. Watch El Camino is a break movie. Trifecta. Oh no, <laughs> that's a movie though. We're talking about TV series. So yes, watch Breaking all the Bad. Movies. Breaking Bad is the present. Better Call Saul is the past. El Camino is the future. Okay, well, it's a movie though. So right, we have a top <laughs> ten, guys. We have a top ten. Okay, all right. Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, three three. X Files, Avatar: The Last Airbender, Harris, Free, <laughs> Dexter, Dark Shadows, twelve hundred episodes of it. Twelve hundred and thirty, young man. Thank you. Um, Sons of Anarchy, Homeland, Farscape, and Supernatural is our top ten list of bits binsworthy TV that I now have to watch. <laughs> you almost said bitchworthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of these two shows are bitch worthy. So uh, no, they're binge worthy, which is awesome. Um, we did it. Survival guide down. One more. We just and, uh, and now we are never. We are not going to stream again until we've all watched twelve hundred and thirty episodes. So yeah. see you in ten years. <laughs> yeah, I, I need a neural link to download. <laughs> my next, my next episode, my eyes going to be like this, and I'm just like, I'm two hundred in. <laughs> Kill me. Kill me. <laughs> right, cool. Right, so we're going to move on to talk about a couple of other things. I do want to talk a little bit about AI in movies because I've just seen the new um, uh, uh, Mission Impossible film. Um, I know now you guys, I don't want to do any spoilers for it, but it's about AI and AI is in the news at the moment. But Stormy, you wanted to say something about the strike? 
before so, we talk about I've been that. reading I've been reading about a lot of the mechanics of the strike. You know, I'm very supportive of the actors and and the writers and so forth. But there's one there's one industry in the film business that is so crucial. I mean, there, there's other, you know, like the um, the direct the, the directors have a guild, the lighting guys have a guild, the um, even the prop masters, you know, the editors, they all have guilds. There's one group that does not, and that's the CGI guys. Yeah, they don't have one though. No. They do not have one. And I found there's this user on Tumblr, and yes, I'm still on Tumblr. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, from Student of Ethereum. They write, CGI animators should unionize next. Normally, their jobs would be too precarious to strike since studios would replace them without a second thought. But if it's part of a larger general strike, they might finally have meaningful power to better their working conditions. If CGI animators unionize, it would kill the MCU straight up. The entire business model is built on exploiting CGI animators. I don't care if you're a fan of Marvel. You shouldn't be. But that is also irrelevant either way. So I really, and I was, I was really almost really upset that I, I thought they were unionized, but they're not. And how many how many screen hours of everything that's in the MCU has been because of those guys? And you, know? and you can see that they're being massively overworked because that's one of the reasons why, you know, that there's one of the big arguments against Marvel in the last few years is these guys are overworked and it's their work is suffering. Yeah. Um, but this is why I did the video yesterday talking about how do you how do we support the guild that all these different writers and I don't want to give money to the Writers Guild or the Actors Guild, because I actually think this is a bigger problem that the studios have shut down. A lot of these people that do the lighting, do the sandwich trucks, do all these things, they're all yeah. short-term contracts. As soon as the studio shut down, they're just gone, thank you very much, goodbye. And they're out They're out in their ear and they've got no work. So Sidetrack is going to be supporting the Entertainment Community Fund, um, which is, the, if you go check the video I did yesterday, early morning, there's a link to it in there. Um, we give um, a small amount of our, uh, 10% of our income every month goes to charity. I choose it for each month. While the strike's going on, we're going to be giving to that. So um, they give money to, you can basically, anybody that works in the entertainment industry can request support in their emergency fund. Um, if you're, you know, literally can't feed your kids, you can't, you're not going to miss yeah. rent, you're going to do these sorts of things. And it's anybody in the entertainment industry. Um, this uh, fund has been going since 1882 or something. Um, it used to be called the Actors Fund, but they wanted to spread it and, you know, and, and help anybody in the entertainment mm -hmm. industry. They have things like, um, uh, they, they help people find housing and stuff like that. It's a proper, it's really a proactive organization to really support people in the entertainment industry. So, we're going to be supporting them while thing goes on. And I will ask anybody else that, that okay. supports Sidetrack to do the same. All right. There's a link in that. I think it's um, entertainmentfund.org, I think, is the website. Too. Yeah, entertainmentcommunity.org is the um, yeah. name of it. So, but, uh, the, I think <clears throat> if there's anything that the studio should have learned from uh, COVID – is that if you take away someone's uh, ability to uh, provide for themselves, mm -hmm. they go someplace else. You know, so there's also, I've heard a little bit of uh, ramblings about brain drain on Hollywood. You know, a lot of these people, like uh, these craft, these uh, craft service people, they'll just, you know, have a, they'll just change their business model a little bit and just become a food truck tooling around Hollywood or whatever, yeah. you know, and cause a lot of people that didn't, they did not go back to their jobs after uh, COVID mm -hmm. because their jobs kind of sucked. They kind of mm -hmm. got used to not being abused by the customer base. And so the thing that also, I believe that the studios are risking is a pretty hideous talent brain drain in all sectors, you know, and I'd like to hear Harris's comments about this specifically, you know, uh, B and C list actors and and uh, um, extras, I mean, just moving on to something else. You know, some of the performance, maybe like stand up or whatever. But what do you think? 
I, I plead the fifth. I'm part of it, but I uh, I've seen a lot of people switch up careers, or, or at least what they thought their career would look like. Um, yeah. pe- people that have been doing extra background work for 15, 20 years that had just you know didn't never really truly plan on joining the union or anything like that. Just it's decent cash, and that's what they were doing. And, and during COVID, everything changed a lot, of course, because you know you you have to take tests before you go on set, which the only good part about all that was that you got paid like 90 bucks for every time you got a COVID test. So that, that was decent. Uh, but yeah, p- people got tired of that and they, they completely changed the way they thought about a lot of things. Uh, currently we're seeing a lot of people that are out of work at the moment that would be working on these sets and things going to like reality shows and things like that. Just cause that's, that's the only paying job at the moment. That's the only thing that's like workable. Uh, we're, it's a little small independent film, so we're not associated with anything and we're not breaking any rules or anything. But we, we're, we're finishing filming that little horror movie uh, this coming month. And we, we almost lost our director of photography because he got a three month job on a reality show that he never expected to do. I don't think he's ever done reality before. But because of everything going on, he couldn't say no. So it's kind of, it, it's a course corrected it in a way, you know? Yeah. But can you no. imagine? I mean, how many movies or TV shows have you that you that we've talked about in the last year didn't have any CGI effects? Next to none. The the, the only thing I can think of is Oppenheimer. That's it. I know CGI in that. I know they mm-hmm. used the actual yeah. explosion, didn't they, for the, um, the the real footage? That well, he said there's no CGI. There's a little bit of animation and things like that but it's, it's not it is, you, you can't tell everything looks completely real and in camera and, and of course that's always his goal which is why it's the only one i can think of like that i, I legitimately can't name another thing that doesn't use it hmm. and, and and the problem is that i, I mean I, I was watching something about I, like I, said, I wanted to mention that i'd watched the mission impossible today mm-hmm. um, there is a lot of cgi in that obviously but there's a lot of physical um stunts and things in it as well and they and, and he said they purposely said when we can't when we can do it without cgi we're gonna do it without cgi even the stuff for like putting the masks on and stuff it says a lot of it was physically done you know they was, were switching out the actors and clever camera angles and stuff mm-hmm. he said normally we would just have done cgi but in the, they just went into it consciously with a if we don't have to let's not because it's being overused it's just massively being overused in cinema and I, but, I love that it just allows you to put things in frame that, like, usually you would have to hide on a camera trick or something like that. But that camera trick works so well because sure. the eye still sees it. You know, the, the, it, it doesn't lose that um, uh, whatever term I can't think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's still it, it's in camera. It's 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 real, and you can visibly tell that versus. There's some uh, there's something uncanny about CGI, and, and mm-hmm. it can be amazing. But if there's a if there's like a being of any kind, like that's how you typically tell. I think I think mm-hmm. nature CGI we've almost perfected in a lot of ways, but you just put something moving too fast, and, and it's supposed to move with muscles and stuff like that. You can make it look great, but it mm-hmm. it's, it's time and money, which we were just talking about a little bit ago. They don't have as yeah. much anymore. If we if they unionize the CGI though, will it just go abroad? Yeah, very quickly, very quickly. Well, it's already abroad. Have you ever read the credits? I mean, it's all yeah. in India, Chinese, or South Korean animators. Yeah, Germany is the big one at the moment. Germany have got a massive CGI industry, and I tell you, I have heard, and this is firmly in the rumor category, but I actually had a guy come to me that did some work for a certain cgi company in germany and he said they've been approached about doing a big project for mgm um from april till september 2024 doing a lot of the rendering work and he says he doesn't know if that's stargate but it's a stargate or robocop um and they've been approached and and written initial contracts apparently according to him Oh. Um, I, can't, I can't confirm whether that is true or not because I don't I don't know the source particularly. It's just somebody that like got in touch and never bothered checking up on it, but because I wouldn't even know where to start checking if, whether that's true or not. But even he said he wasn't sure what it was. But it's it would seem though that if if that is true and blah 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 that they're looking to a German company to do it, 
and it, it's like you said that it's not the first time hollywood you can do that abroad it's very easy nowadays um it doesn't need to all be done in hollywood and it won't be and this mm -hmm. is what the strike is it really is important and there is a risk to the strikers in hollywood because the studios don't care so much they're okay with it getting even the filming can be done in abroad to a decent standard now they don't need hollywood like they used to and that's the risk well, i think i think that was one of uh, george lucas's uh things is uh, i remember one time he said i actually heard him say this is on actually he's on video he said um i like programmers more than i do actors uh, he was just, he, he was about a strike and it was one of the reasons why he did, um, <clears throat> he was, uh, shooting a lot of, uh, Phantom Menace overseas was to, to avoid, uh, the guilds. I mean, I don't think, I think he, uh, left the director's guild, didn't he? I don't know if he left it, but he did not like playing in their, in their yeah. wheelhouse. Mm -mm. He didn't like playing in anybody's he wheelhouse. Everything. Well, that, that's the whole point in Skywalker Ranch is like, he's yeah. like, we're getting the hell out of Hollywood and we're, we're going a little north, you know, which yeah. I do not blame him. No, yeah. uh, there's a reason why Canada's got such a strong um, industry as well in is that they can avoid certain aspects of the guilds, but it still feels American sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and it's still the Hollywood audience and the American audience will still accept it. Yeah. Um, but Stargate's the epitome of that yeah but it's just going further and further beyond that now so yeah but i agree with you there's there's a real danger um uh they're talking about um harry um talking about cgi in um we've talked about this a couple of weeks ago the cgi in the flash is actually awful in places it's it's it's, it's you know really bad um um sci-fi that i enjoyed the the flash but it's just ezra miller i didn't mind ezra miller I minded the flying weird babies. Flying weird babies was just strange. Um, so, right. I've just seen the new Mission Impossible movie. The plot um, is about an AI. That's I think that's out there. I'm not spoiling anything for anybody. It's not the thing. I do have a theory that after Dead Reckoning Part 2, the sequel movie is called The Terminator. And then the film after that is Terminator 2. So I actually think the Mission Impossible movies are prequels. And which nobody knew for their prequels, and because they put Skynet into this, bloody Mary! And um, it's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> there goes um, the earth. But um, I just, I just thought between the, about you guys because uh, I know Harris, you've seen it. Stormy, have you seen the Mission Impossible yet? No, I have not. No, when you do, thing. But is AI? I mean, it's very popular in movies right now, but it has been for probably thirty years. What yeah. are the best movies that you think you've seen the way where we've seen AI? And I mean proper AI, artificial intelligence, not the AI that people keep talking about at the moment, which isn't AI. It's just it 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 it's pretending it's a ghost of AI. It's not really AI. But anyway, um what are the best movies you think with, with AI in? One of the ones that worked and one of the ones that just didn't. A new hope. C three PO. I was getting ready to say C three PO. C three I mean, everyone so they're all scared of AI and I understand it, but we are so predetermined to just think Skynet, 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 and like Terminator shit. C three PO is a completely viable option for AI, and I'm, I'm hoping we get our two D twos and C three POs. That's what I'm saying. C three PO, first time an Android on film, you know, with anxiety issues. Love it. <laughs> I like R two D two. He's got such a foul mouth there to beep out every word that man has to say. That's assist. right. That's right. Uh -huh. I mean, he is just, he's just like, I think that's, um, it's a, it's an Android from Glasgow, just swears constantly. And it's like, boop, 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 boop. And anybody says, been in Scotland, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Him or Chopper, have you ever watched Star Wars Rebels? Chopper is the only other kind of R2 type unit that literally, yeah. it, they, he cusses in the show and they, it's Dave Filoni voicing him and they have to like, they, 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 they change the speed of how he says it so it sounds like a droid, and he just cusses like a motherfucker. It's, it's hilarious. It's so bad. Excuse my French, but it's great. It's so good. I love it, yeah. Um, I, I For me, the first CGI, outside AI movie I remember was War Games. 
and um, and that was a you know he, the the world is saved by tic tac toe. You can't argue with that. Um, the the world war should be in, saved by tic tac toe every single time. Um, but if you haven't seen it, basically the, the the computer is now in charge of nuclear weapons. Thinks they can win a nuclear conflict. And Matthew Broderick has to teach him that certain games just can't be won. There is no winner. And he uses tic-tac-toe, which we all know if you get the three corners, you can win tic-tac-toe every single time or it becomes a draw every single time. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think they've ever actually done better than that. I know, I know Terminator is basically the sequel to War Games. So what it goes is Mission Impossibles, War Games, Terminator movies. And those, 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 that's, they all exist in the same universe, is my theory. Um, I like the head cannon. You like what? The head cannon. Head cannon. That's, that's, that's your own head cannon. Uh, but yeah. I like it. I subscribe to it now. We got a theory. Yeah, I, I think it's a working theory. I'm just trying to think of any other films though that have had like proper decent AI in it that's worked. 2001. Yeah, 2001. It really that. worked. <laughs> yeah, and it was genuinely like that scared the crap out of a load of scientists. <laughs> They're all going. Yeah. Well, that's that's realistic. That could actually happen. Oh shit! Um, I don't think any others. Robocop. I quite like the way how they they sort of worked that in that he set all those rules up that were counterintuitive. What's the movie with actually that they they set up and they set up like a core principle of the program? But it's well, actually I'm thinking about Terminator. Aren't they? they have core principles, so the computer decides. Oh no, Matrix. It has to protect the planet and decides that oh the only way to protect the planet is by killing all the humans, basically. And, and that's like logical. That like makes sense. I'm like, yeah, oh. get rid of us. It's all fine. Oh, oh, oh! I completely. Ha I, I just had to Google movies with AI just to think about it real quick. Uh oh. Okay, I immediately brain farted. I got to look at it real quick. Again. Oh, there we go. I'm back to my O's. Ex Machina. Ex Machina. I Perfect. watched Ex Machina uh, three days ago. First time or, or just like a rewatch? Second. Okay. Okay. It's so good. It is. You know, and so, you know, there's a guy at work that is doing a, um, he's doing a, a, a paper for college on Ex Machina. And it, yeah. uh, he really went down the rabbit hole with this thing. And so we, you know, we, we re frequently talk about this film this last week. One thing that occurred to me in this last viewing was, the dress that she wears on the way out of the house, it's almost like a wedding dress. Hmm. Kind of, yeah. You know, and, and just, it was, it's just it, very well done. Very well done. Yeah. Blade Runner? Is that another movie that did like AI and sort of androids and stuff quite well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, what's Blade one? Runner would have definitely. Oh, hmm. oh uh, that makes me think of like Chappie. Chappie's kind of up there, but it's Chappie, yeah. It's just, I like Chappie. I like Chappie. Uh, I guess I robot. Thinking, yeah, I robot. Yeah. The one thing I was thinking about with um in the the movie today though, that the Dead Reckoning is is that the um I, I'm sure it'll explain it more in the second film, but the, the we don't quite know what the motivations of the AI is. And they can basically get into any computer system. They, they're saying at one point they go in, leave fingerprints, and then go out. Just based a warning, I can get into everything. So it's, it's, it is, they call it the entity, don't they? But it is yeah. unusual that, that it, it goes in and affects all these systems and doesn't actually do anything. So I'm really looking forward to the second part. Just really quickly, though, what did you actually think of the movie, Paris? Just generally, um, any spoilers because people haven't seen it yet. Well, uh, I, I will spoil one thing immediately is that there's more running than typical. Which I loved. Every time he runs, I just start smiling. Like I think there's twice as much running as he's ever done in any other movie, and I'm completely fine with it. It's it's so much fun. Uh, it's almost you know how in the Flash he kind of like gets ready how to do that little thing or whatever. It, I almost yeah. feel like Ethan Hunt's just like preparing to do that, and then just runs straight. Tom Cruise runs. I like the bit in the airport where you see him through the window at the top. And I'm just like, that's just a poke fun at the fact that Tom Cruise runs all the time. You can see it's Tom. You can tell it's Tom Cruise run. And it works so well, too, at the same time. It's so good. I love that. That scene's great. Uh, but but I, I really did enjoy the movie. I, I thought it was really good. I think it kind of hurt itself by calling it a part one. It is a part one. I think it fits as its own standalone movie just fine. But mm -hmm. you can 
it it you can kind of feel it. I think it's still its own movie just fine, but you can feel that it is it needs uh, continuing, I guess. Uh I, I did find it interesting. They talked about the the five minutes, I think, of the submarine was not gonna be in this movie. It was gonna be in part two. And the studio uh, said, Hey, you have to put that in there. So I guess Tom Cruise doesn't always get his way, but I think it made sense, and it, it set the whole thing up. I, honestly, yeah. this movie, some of the fight scenes, I'm genuinely on the edge of my seat, and I'm just like, I cannot. I, the fight scene on the little bridge, oh, my God. Oh, great. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Uh, um, the, I, the, the train I, sequence. Yeah. All of it. Went on a bit, but, but yeah, I thought it was good. Honestly, there's Whoa. nothing bad I can say about this film. Nothing bad. There's no. It's the first film I've seen in ages where I come out and go in, that was the perfect cinematic movie. Um. That there's nothing wrong with it. I have no complaints. It's just a good popcorn movie. It's nearly three hours long. It doesn't feel like it. No. It's um, so good. The acting's great. The writing's great. There's a couple of little twists there that you aren't expecting. Um, there's the whole bit with is the Gabriel thing, though, that they, I thought they could have set up a bit more, but I wonder if maybe we're going to get a bit more in the second part, maybe. Maybe. Um, because it's a bit vague on what's going on there. Um no complaints. Go watch it. Please go watch it in cinema as well because honestly, it's just it's just brilliant. I just love uh, it. And it's just so fun. It, it's one of those movies where you're legitimately having fun just sitting there and watching it. Yeah. It's so Perfect. good. Perfect cinema movie. Perfect mm -hmm. cinema movie. Brilliant. That train sequence was supposed to be 90 minutes long originally. There is a 90 minute cut of it somewhere. But I mean, the thing is as well, it's it is a perfect cinema, and this is if we lose our cinemas, which which I think is a genuine threat. I think we could, the big cinema chains are struggling at the moment, and if we boycott them to you know support the actor strike, I think that's a massive mistake. Don't do it, um, because it's not you're not just hurting the studios, you're hurting the entire industry, and these are the people that entertain us. You know, like give them a break. Um, but um, that's the sort that's the sort of movie that we're going to lose if we if we if we you're not going to get you'd have to have like a hundred inch tv screen at home to enjoy that in the same way as you enjoy it in the cinema and there's just no way yeah we need our cinema people so go to the cinema watch movies do one of the largest movies. industries on the face of this planet we like to joke about it and it is joke worthy but it is one of the largest industries on the face of the planet and it's coming to a bit of a standstill in the largest heart of it at the moment which is interesting it's, yeah, they're struggling. They're struggling. All right, then. That's all I wanted to talk about. Guys, have you got anything else? Oh, uh, what have you guys been watching this week? Anything good? Firefly! Right? Firefly. Great. Greatest television show ever made. I'm still, I am up to season six of Stargate SG-1. Uh, I'm on my super, super, super focused uh, binge of all the Stargates. And so I'm um, on season six. Hopefully I'll get close to done maybe by of Stargate 1 or SG-1 uh, by middle of next week or maybe uh -huh. this time this week. I don't know. I still a lot, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to binge Atlantis. I've realized because I've been thinking about it and talking about it quite a lot, and I can't remember big chunks of Atlantis. And I'm gonna because it's been a while. I've I watch SG One relatively regular over the last few years because it was on Sky, so I've been watching it, you know, as and when. Over the last, so I've watched it all again. I've watched Seeds um, Stargate Universe because I basically said it was boring and somebody had to go at me, so I'm like, right, I'm gonna watch it again then. And it is, it's still boring. First season's boring. Second season was getting better. Um, but I but I haven't watched Atlantis in years, and I'm gonna have to sit and watch it. So that's that's my next binge. Yeah. I think. Atlantis. It is um, great. Um, I just said brain things. Um, I, I have seen yeah uh, the F Forbidden Project and yeah and Colossus. I have seen them both. Not for years though, so don't ask me anything about it. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. I, I, the only thing, thing I've been watching this year, and I've, this, I've just finished watching the Newsroom, which is written by um, Aaron Sorkin, which is if anybody just wants to watch it, if you're a, if you're a Trump supporter, for the love of God, don't watch it. It'll just make you angry. But um, if you're not a Trump supporter, watch it. It's really thought-provoking. It's absolutely brilliant. 
I thought it got cancelled because it wasn't popular, but it actually got cancelled because Aaron Sorkin got so sick to death of putting so much work into just 10 episodes. He just gave up. He said, I'm not doing it anymore. It's too much hard work. Um, but, but yeah, it's absolutely fantastic series. Go and give it a try. Aaron Sorkin is the best. Yeah, it's brilliant. He is a brilliant writer. Proper Democrat, but yeah. Stormy, sure is nothing you want to throw in before we say goodbye? Well, I had all these other choices if it really goes on for a long time. Okay. So on Pluto, there's always a Space 1999, and there's classic Doctor Who and, of course, original OG uh, Twilight Zone. Uh, on Hulu, something that I was wanted to talk about was Sleepy Hollow. Very uh, good kind of time traveling. Yeah. Kind the of British time. guy that played that is just—I thought he was great. It, the end was crap, but the first season, of like, yeah, was it was really, really good. Yeah. On Prime, you've got Mr. Robot, and of course, Rings of Power. You should watch a lot. Disney Plus, if you're a Disney Pluser, Agent Carter, which I think is one of the best Marvel TV shows. Who, just who is in the new Mission Impossible movie, and she's very excellent. Pretty. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, oh, she can act as well, but she's mm. very pretty. And uh, Cosmos, a little educational show, uh, Possible Worlds, and Once Upon a Time. That goes on for a season or two. I don't know uh, the first two or three seasons of Once Upon a Time. Does it, does it stay across the same? It's kind of steady. It's kind of steady. I mean, you know, it's it's broadcast fair, but it, the acting was really good. The acting was really good. Th that's the Disney one, right? With like, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Peacock, you've got Grimm. That was a good show, Grim. That, that show just never got cancelled again, but I tried to watch it and I didn't particularly like it, but they, they need to push through. I, it just, it's, it, it's Some people, it's just not their thing. Some people, yeah. it's just not their thing. On Max, uh, there's Rome. Yeah. Two seasons of that. Very good. I think it's two seasons. Uh, Carnival. Yeah. Two seasons. Very, very good. And about four seasons is The Last Ship. There, uh, it's a, it's about a. Uh, there's this uh, navy vessel near the Antarctic, uh, collecting uh, samples, and uh, apocalypse happens when they were uh, in radio silence for a month. The captain is that guy. I think he was in um, Grey's Anatomy or something, wasn't he? Yes, uh, he was. Yes, he was. I like that guy. He was like a black actor. He was. I mean, how many seasons? I I watched the first season, but then I sort of I didn't bother it's when the second. Season. I think it's fourish seasons. That was a good show. I enjoyed that. It's I enjoyed the four seasons, right? Uh, Netflix, Black Mirror, and The Sandman. Everyone's got My Everyone. wife comes to me and says she's bought my son the comic, the first volume of the comic, um, the, the graphic novels for The Sandman, and yeah. she went, "This is a Netflix series. Did you know?" And I'm like, "Babe, we watched it." We sat together and we watched it. Do you remember the first? He was a naked guy in a big thing. And she's like, oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, <laughs> the naked guy. Oh, the naked guy. Yeah, 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 I yeah. I love yeah. you, babe. I love you so much. Because you remember the first couple of, it was, it, I didn't like the first couple of episodes. I was thinking, oh, this is hard work. And But then by the end of it, I was just like, it's season two. two. I want season two. <laughs> but um, that was a slow burn. Last is Apple Plus. You must see C, S-E-E. Jason Momoa, excellent. Foundation, excellent. Silo is excellent, and for all mankind. And I think I one think. thing I want to say about Apple Plus is they don't have a lot of shows, but every, what they do have is all really high quality stuff. They, they Apple, uh, uh, Apple are going to buy a studio, the next studio that goes that gets into real trouble, and goes up for sale. And I think it might be Paramount. Um, Apple will buy. Oh my God! I, I mean, they got they got, um, they got outbid. They've got like what, almost a hundred billion in cash. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, you know, they, they're, they're they got awesome. they got profits. They got profits. I don't know why they underbid for MGM. They only bid like three and a half billion or something, and um, Amazon came in and went eight, and and they must have just gone, what? Why are you paying eight? Um, and they said so they didn't bid again. But I mean, Amazon could have. Uh, sorry, Apple could have just gone well, ten. If they yeah. wanted to, I paid it immediately. Um, but and we'd probably have something on our screens already too. Well, because Amazon then have had some massive cash flow problems, and that's I have I did speak to somebody recently. They were saying one of the reasons why they've not announced anything major from MGM is because they've got some cash flow problems, and they have to move things around. And that there's a lot of business reasons why they've not announced anything. That seems to be an issue with MGM. As much as I love the company. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, they've MGM as a company doesn't really exist anymore. That's true. They're, that's a, true. they're a badge on the side of a building. So that's what that's the main reason why this is all taking so long. Amazon has just been slowly dismantling the company, absorbing what they yeah. want to and thing. And that that is a, a, the, the the main reason why we still haven't had Stargate announced and Robocop announced. But they haven't actually announced anything major. No major project from MGM has been announced since Amazon took it over nearly a year ago. But, uh, it's nearly been a year. Has Legally Blonde three officially been announced or no? Because that's like the only thing that I would think like might be um, the official announcement. Legally Blonde three was actually in um, pre production before the sale went through and it got paused because of the sale. So oh. that was the one thing that really should have been done, and even that's not. Like, but it, it was in pre production. It and was one of the easier start. and cheaper ones to do too. They just, but they paused everything. So, mm. um, if it basically, if it wasn't in production come August last year, they've they've paused almost everything. That that that's not major anyway. Um, a few other things. I feel obviously MGM Plus have been doing a few things here and there, like Billy the Kid and stuff like that, but nothing major. Oh, yeah. Um, but you think about everything that they've got that they wanted that we've been talking about: Stargate, Robocop, the Legally Blonde three. Obviously, is the most important of those three. But of you know course. that. Nothing's been announced, and it's and, and, but it's not. It's, it's because they had to restructure MGM, and then the strikes happened. So, and they knew the strikes were coming, so they prioritized other things. That's, so, that's, that's, I, 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 I don't know if this show I'm getting ready to talk about is because of the strikes. I don't think it is, but it's the most insane reality show I have ever seen. Stars on Mars. Have you guys heard of this? No. Uh-uh. It's got William Shatner as the host. No. Okay, I love okay that. so just I I I I I Is it I don't want to if, huh? if it's not Saturn Mars, if it's not Saturn Mars, I've got a problem with it. It stars on Mars. I I, I don't want my um Negative feelings about this to spawn off on everybody else, but just go see it, watch it on your own, form your own conclusions. But you know, it, it's got like a Lance Armstrong's in it, and it's just as yeah, it's just stars on Mars, and they fake these these emergencies in the habitat. They run out of water, run out of air, dude. It it's just. I really hope with the writer strike and everything that this is not where we're going in terms of television. Oh, it is for the time being. Stars, I mean, uh, amazing race is one thing, right? But this is a whole different, lower, guttural. Just watch it and see what you think. I may be wrong. Stars on Mars. So where the fuck that's the title? I'm going to keep it up. Before we go, one last little question. So um, I know Harris and Matt aren't big Trekkies, but me and Stormy are. So last night it was announced that we're going to be getting a Star Trek the musical. Um, <laughs> it's a Subspace Rhapsody. Um, ten original songs, including one a new version of Bohemian Rhapsody, um, but on based on Strange New Worlds. Stormy, what is your first thought about that? I wish Tim Curry was a lot of anger. <laughs> so, I mean, my first thought is uh, I, I would hope somehow they get Tim Curry to be in it, you know, it's like a backup background voice or something, you know, it's mm-hmm. maybe a tap dance is just, the I really Curry. thought your point when I saw that you mentioned it, it's like, that can't be true. But then, you know, look at all the other shows that's done it quite successfully. I think Buffy did it twice. It's not successful. But go on. But the anyway, boys successfully. Just, huh? The boys managed it fairly successfully. Yeah. Boys managed it successfully. That's true. The Flash uh, did it, and it was awful. And and I guess by by successful, I mean that they did a musical show, and it didn't cancel the show. So by <laughs> that's the metric I'm using for it was successful. They didn't cancel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I I as long as Tim Curry's in it, I'm good. That's Tim my. Tim Curry's really not well. He's still acting though. I mean, he could do the voiceover or something. He could do the narration. He's still well, working. I think, 
my thoughts are in the video I did earlier, but basically I I spent a bit of time. But I, my first thought was it's a joke. And I'm just thinking, well, you've only got 10 episodes. Why are we wasting one of them with a musical? I just, you know, if it was 22 episodes and we were on like the fifth season and they thought, let's do a musical, I'd be like, okay, that's a fun little filler episode. Why not? But when you've only got 10 and it's the second season, I'm like, have you not really got any other better ideas than a musical? Yeah, that's not good. Because you want that musical. Like, I keep going back to The Boys, but The Boys fit that musical episode in, and it worked within the narrative, and it pushed the show forward at the same time, where mm. I, I, have, of course, haven't seen Star Trek or Strange New Worlds or any of that. I just can't imagine that episode pushing the narrative forward, whatever it is. I want to see Dancing Klingons. Dancing Klingons. Showgirl Dancing Klingons. That's, that's what I want. Now. It's the last nail going in. Yeah. Oh, we kind of got that in um, Discovery once or twice. They um this the Klingons got sexy. And it was painful. <laughs> it was, was was it as sexy as your, your voice yesterday on, on the live stream? Klingons on the stop. And yeah, it was it was awful. So um I just wondered what your idea was before we say goodnight to everybody. But dear uh -huh. Lord, Jesus God in heaven. Um, I, I just, I can't. Um, the guy, I, 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 Sean Ferrick is somebody I really do respect and he's amazing. And he's on Trek Culture. He's, he's actually just tweeted literally you know, saying, what, can you please just tell me how this is going to hurt you? And uh, now, can you please show us on the diagram where the mean Star Trek musical episode will hurt you <laughs> or hurt you? I am much excited because people are not impressed by this. I'm too sexy oh. for my red shirt. Too sexy for my red shirt. Oh, it's going to hurt. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, no. The mean Star Trek episode touched me on my sonic screwdriver. <laughs> it hurt. But well, anyway. Matt's doing God knows what to his David Tennant mm -hmm. poster when the camera's off. and he just David Tennant's back there. What, what, what you doing there? <laughs> you know, I always come back and he's all flush. Look at him, he's all flush, rosy cheeks. <laughs> what you been doing back there, Kyo? We can't oh. see David Tennant's face, but David Tennant sees it. He's like, going, <laughs> 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 by, what, by what Matthew's just done to him. Uh, thank you guys so much. Brilliant, fun chat as always. We will continue our oh, next week with something else. <laughs> Um, can I come in here with a quick stormy comment? It's not It's not going to be a 20-minute conversation, but at the beginning will. of our stream, Lee Wilcox, Fish Frogs and Four Cats, has been here the entire time. Yeah. I think we should put a petition down to go by the animals that he called us at the beginning of the stream. Uh, I missed that. He, called us you know, it was great. he said, I was a fox. I will take it. He called Jamie a gopher. Uh <laughs> Which was oh hilarious. <laughs> it cracked me up. Uh, Matt was like a badger, and Stormy was the wise old owl. And I was oh like, oh, I like "Why it. am I a badger?" Hey, we're the only predators. Uh, the three of us. <laughs> it's the only time we're on top. <laughs> Badgers are. Uh, I mean, they're, they're quite. They're a good looking animal. <laughs> mean as hell. I climbed oh, over a hill one and face to face with a badger, and it tried to kill me. Um, oh, why do I get a gopher? Very excitable. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love it. I don't even know what a gopher. We don't get gophers in this country. What gophers famous for? I mean, other than like being having oh, big a it's a big rodent. It's a big rodent. Yeah. That's a picture of a gopher. Thanks, yeah. man. Why? He's blocked. Uh, right, so <laughs> nice old owl, and with that, badger, not a clue. You should get it like, um, I don't know, I, I, I think you should be like an eagle or something. And um, <laughs> Harris, I think you should be one of those, um, what are the meerkats? You should be a meerkat. You're you know trying what? to push the rodent off on me now. Yeah, man, I don't want to be a uh, caddy sack. Caddy sack. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm happy about that. Um, <laughs> you're lovely aliens to me, no matter if I miss rodent you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I keep my rodent. <laughs> it's a puppet. <laughs> That's a British joke. But anyway, right. New name, Gopher and the Gators. I'm not, this isn't sticking. If I get called Gopher again on this screen, I'm swear to God, Sidetrack is dead. I'm ending it. 
the channel will be deleted the next day and that will be it. So if you ever call me Gopher again, that is it, right? You sat. The only way to call him Gopher is to do it in super chats. <laughs> That's too fair. I'd accept that. <laughs> but anyway, no, it's good. Don't don't do it. Don't get into the comments. Uh, go from the gators. That works. Oh God, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you did make me laugh. Well done, sir. I missed that comment completely, um, and then um, you got to watch the entire stream because of it. Because I would have blocked you. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> guys thank you so much it's been entertaining as always um i should get some sort of leadership what's a leadership animal a right. gopher <laughs> the gopher's not le lead it's, it's a... uh, oh. you, you, you can lead from the back of the badger the back of the owl or the back of the fox you get options a lion why can't it be a lion be a lion or my, my um, sat-nav keeps going, um, and in 300 yards, bear left. And every single time it does it, I go, er. <laughs> every single time. I'm on my own in the car going, er. <laughs> every time the car says, a wolf. I want to be a wolf. This is the first time I've never had a timeout on. Give me a timeout, please, before you go. Time me out. We don't do timeouts because I don't know how to do it. Um, I can I can literally block you or not block you, and that's it. Because <laughs> I've never looked into it. Um, a bell sheep. Oh, my, my wait, this have gone. Did Matt do that? Yeah, he's back. There he is. Okay, okay. A wolf. I want to be a wolf. Gophers can dig their own graves. <laughs> that got dark quick. Speaking of the one I'm show I should have mentioned earlier, was Penny Dreadful. I'm pretty sure when this channel gets cancelled, it'll either be because of Stormy or because Whoa, why, is, why is he banned? Why is he banned? He's not banned. He says. It says Lee Wilcox Fish Frogs yeah, that's, banned. That's what I was asking. I thought you did that. No. I did time. I did time out. I didn't do ban. <laughs> I unban him, please. It literally oh, says time out. I can't do it, so unban him. There is um, a little time thing next to it, but Lee, if you're well, watching, banned, I, I their comments have been removed. I hope. I hope. You? I hope you're not banned. I'm sorry, Lee. Undo it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> the line leader is a female. Yeah, but I don't want to be the leader. I want to. I want to sit around and get women bring stuff to me. Well, there's always a javelina. You could be a javelina. <laughs> uh, I don't think I know what that is. <laughs> I don't think that those no, exist no, in that no, part no, of the no. world. He's, he's definitely not bad. He's definitely pretty bad. sure it, they don't. Ha ha javelina are more. They they are the people think they're closely related to hogs and pigs oh, and stuff, really but they're more closely related to nutria. They're literally nutria pigs. They are terrible things. Terrible things. Yeah, that's probably true as well. I don't have any pride. Havelina, yeah. Or fear, or um. Common I don't sense. know. I like the gopher. The gopher stuck to me already. I that, that cracks me up. The gopher <laughs> got as much as on my brain. I I definitely like I say this this. This channel will definitely one day get cancelled by YouTube because of Stormy or because I'm trying to talk myself out of something I've said. And that is digging my own grave and we're going to get banned for it. So, a wombat. <laughs> right. Um, guys, thank you so Lee is back as a granddad who plays games now. Right. So, someone timed me out. I mean, they timed Lee out. Good one. He needs it. The naughty little boy. We did it accidentally. Can we try and get um, fish and chips back if we can, please? Because I don't know how to do it. Guys, thank you so much. We'll be back next week. Um, we'll probably be live in the week on Harris's channel, so go and join. We might do a joint video on Wednesday where we'll be on both channels, but we need subscribers for Young Harris's live four nights a week doing your live videos, talking about yeah, news. Four or five, typically. So and we we all jump on and we help out and we need subscribers, subscribers, subscribers. And there's a link in the description. So go this one day, Wednesday is going to be a good one. We've got a, a SAG actor that was at San Diego San Diego Comic Con, so we're going to be talking that a little bit. And then uh, he he's he's also a theater owner and a producer and stuff like that. So we're talking all the good stuff. Have you guys seen Sean Aston? Uh, he's actually one of the negotiators for SAG. Have you seen his interviews post post these uh, negotiations? Uh-uh. 
you, you, you should go look at him. I mean, you know, Samwise Gamgee, he's one of the uh, actual negotiators at the table. Um, mm. And he's very passionate about it. He's very well spent. I'm surprised he wasn't a lawyer in another life. Uh, try to dig up some of his interview people that have that are interviewed people that's interviewed him. Uh huh. He's he, he he's very moving, you know. And and it, it's just just, just go, I, I just recommend hunting down his videos wherever they may be uh, concerning the uh, the uh, the actor strike. Hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So check. I've been trying to follow and share as many tweets as I can from the actors and the, the actual people out on the line. So I'll I'll keep looking and find some more. But yeah. All right. Uh, right. Cool, guys. I will see you soon. We'll say good night. Have fun. Our oh, challenge question. Oh God. Why do groups of animals all have different names? A pride of lions, a pack of wolves, a murder of crows, a herd of cattle. I don't know, but put it in the comments and we'll find it later. Uh, what would we be called? We, 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 are we a gaggle? A gaggle of that was the first word I was going to use, which is a bad. Of streamers or gurgle right. of streamers? A gurgle of streamers. We're a gurgle. We're a, no, no, I got it. I got it. We're a buff of streamers. Oh, well, I, I mean, hell yeah. I mean, come on. We're, we're I, the thing about, you know, we're buffering stream. So uh, we're okay. We're buff. Buff. Okay. Collective People are buff yeah. streamers. Yeah. Right. I guys, thank you. So much. We'll be back next week. Have a good one, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye.